he says, I'll forgive your sins first. That forgiveness has to come to America before he'll heal our land. See, he wants it. We want him to just heal our land and make it all good again. But he doesn't say he'll do that first. He says, I'm going to forgive your sins first. Now, the only way you get sin forgiven in your own life is to repent from it. America's got some repenting to do, and that means turn and run the other way. We've got some turning and running the other way that we need to do here in this great country. And I know I'm, I'm speaking to the choir right here. You folks know that. I can tell you're the, you're the ones that have turned from your wicked ways, and, and you're here today because you understand what it takes. But I'm just reading some scripture to you. Then I'll hear from heaven and heal your land. I don't know about you, but I want my land healed. America, we've got some repenting to do. If you don't mind right now, let's just corporately pray. Right here on these grounds. Heavenly Father, right now we come to the throne. Oh Lord, we're a sinful nature. A country that's calling good evil and evil good as your word said it would. But Lord, we're going to stand strong. And we're going to cast down those wicked ways right now. Lord, in our own personal lives, we want you to reveal to us what would be wicked in the sight of you, in your sight, in your glory. And Lord, help us to turn from those wicked things, those wrongdoings, Lord. And Lord, we're going to ask that you'll forgive us of our sins, Lord. Heal our own families. Heal our own land. And heal America. Lord, I'm asking that you give us wisdom and knowledge for the right people to vote for, the ones that have turned from their wicked ways, that are willing to get up in the morning, whether it be in the White House or the, the courthouse, and say, I'm going to the throne first so today I can make the right cause of what needs to happen. Those are the ones I want in my leadership. I want the ones that will listen to you and make the right decisions. So Lord, I'm asking you give us wisdom today. I want you to bring forth, Lord, the ones that are standing up for you. And Lord, the ones that aren't, they'll just start falling by the wayside. And the Lord, I'm asking for America to be smart enough and wise enough because of you to make the right decision when they go to that voting booth. But we know it has to start with our own heart and our own lives. So today, Lord, we're asking you to forgive us. Heal our land. And God, we're asking you to bless America all over again. And we'll give you glory and honor for that. And Lord, we can only ask this because of what Jesus did at Calvary. So we ask it in Jesus' holy name. this on my heart, speaking of Israel. We're at such a point in time in history where it's so important that we understand the ramifications of turning our back against Israel. You know, a lot of people, we've heard it over the years, that we need to bless Israel. Now, a lot of folks don't really even know why we need to bless Israel. They just know the word says we need to bless Israel. 
If you don't mind, it's going to take just a couple minutes to go through this, and it's just on my heart. You see, it was Harry Truman. Roosevelt had picked him to be the vice president. And see, God knew what was going to happen. God knew that Roosevelt was going to pass away, and it was going to take Harry Truman, who would become president. So Harry Truman becomes president, and it was on a May 14, 1948. There was a major decision about to happen. Israel was going to become a nation again, or they were not going to become a nation again. It was one or the other. And I'm going to abbreviate this story. Some of you that know it, you're going to say, well, he's leaving out some points, but I'm just getting to the meat of it here, if you don't mind. Harry Truman's at the White House, and he's got to make a decision on whether... He stands up for Israel, for Israel to become a, a nation again or not. And it all hinged upon his decision. Because all the other nations that were going to vote yes for Israel or no for Israel determined what America did. If America said no, then the rest of them would vote no and Israel would not be a nation again. If America says yes, then they'll all vote and, and it will be. So he's in the White House and he's locked down the doors and he's shut the phones off because he's got to make this decision. And as best as I could tell, Harry Truman was not a godly man. Some say he had the most foul mouth of all the presidents, and I don't really know whether he did or didn't. I don't know whether that kept him from being godly or not, but they said he had a foul mouth. But one thing Harry Truman did have, and, and that was some wisdom that, to know, that there's something bigger than the President of the United States. You see, the President of the United States needs to know, even though he may be the most powerful man in the world, he's not the God of the world. Amen. There's one that he has to answer to above him, and that's the God of the world. So finally he says, God, I'm at a point where I don't know what to do right now. And all of a sudden he reaches into the desk, his old office desk, and he pulls out an old Bible that some family members, parents or grandparents, I don't really remember, had given him. And he laid it on the desk. He said, God, if your word is true, then I'll be able to open that book up and you're going to take me to the point that tells me what to do. And he opens the book to Genesis 12 and 4. And he looks down and says, "If my people, it says, those that will bless Israel, I'll bless, and those that will curse them, I'll curse. And he closes the book, and he calls San Francisco. I believe that's where the UN was at the time, waiting on a phone call. And Harry Truman says, on May 14th, 1948, America stands for Israel. And needless to say, Israel becomes a nation again. Now, wait a minute. It goes beyond that. That's, that's worth applauding. But what happens next? America has the greatest days in their history. Historians say the 1950s were the greatest times in American history. Why? Because Harry Truman, God stood by his word. He said, I'll bless him that bless Israel and I'll curse him that don't. Does. And America has its greatest, greatest times in American history. The days some of you can remember. Remember how great those 50s were? Yeah. They were the great times. Great things happened. President Eisenhower, he puts into our Pledge of Allegiance one nation under God. Wasn't even there before him. 1950s, all of a sudden, poof, there it is. We have a president who declares that's going to be in our pledge. Great evangelists of all times, their, their, their ministries start coming forth. The great Billy Graham went into a great stride in the 1950s. The John Hagees of the world. Martin Luther King started coming forth in the 1950s. Started becoming the great times, greatest times in American history. 1962, we had about 14 years of greatness. 1962, all of a sudden, Madame O'Hara comes onto the scene and Start saying, we don't want God in all this stuff. And one person starts a, a rally. You know, and we get to the point we're at today. So you ask, well, there's some proof there. But my Bible says, here's why I should bless Israel. Because that's where the angel came to Mary. 
in Israel and said, you're going to have a child and his name's going to be called Jesus. It was Israel that Jesus came forth. It was Israel that all those great miracles took place. It was in Israel where that same Jesus would lay down his life for me and you. It was Israel where he came out of that tomb. It was Israel where he walked for 40 more days and then he stood and he started to ascend into heaven. And it's Israel that he said, I'll come back to you. I don't need any more reasons why I should bless Israel. Then that's where my Savior was born and raised. And that's where he says he's coming back to. Now I'm going to ask my son to do something. Derek, I have pulled a stake out. I put red paint on it in representation of those nail-scarred hands. Derek, I want you to take it right over and take that sledgehammer, and I want you to do me a favor. I believe Burton, Ohio would be okay if we proclaimed that this land and this community is going to stand up for Israel. Amen. Derek, I want you to drive that stake in the ground as best you can. And right behind there on a pole, I've put an Israeli flag. And I want you to slide it over that pole right there. My Bible says I'll bless those that bless Israel and I'll curse the ones that don't. I want a blessing. I want my country to be blessed. And I believe right now that we've proclaimed and we've declared a blessing upon this community right here. By standing up for Israel. By standing up for Israel. You want America to be blessed. We need to stand up for Israel. I'm grateful for Israel. I thank God for Israel. And I thank God that we can stand here today and we can do what we just did. Because men and women fought and died for these freedoms. And I'm going to sing a song. If you don't mind, Derek, go ahead. And then we're going to honor these mighty warriors here today. Oh, I wish I was
before we get to those veterans that are here today, I'd like for us to remember all the men and women that in the history of this great America that have laid down their lives protecting our God-given freedoms. I'd like for us to remember the MIAs, the POWs, and while we're gathered here today, let's never forget that there are men and women in a uniform out in that world right now, making and keeping us safe. So we give them all a big round of applause. certificates and I want to start with thanking you know we're in a, a, a crucial time right now with our, our our first responders and our police officers and, and different horrible things are happening but let me say this for every one bad police officer there's 10,000 good ones and I thank God for our men and women that will crawl out of bed every morning and they'll put on that 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 badge and and have to put a gun on their side and have to go out of there and 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 police the evil that's out there and take take their lives and and risk them for us i, I wouldn't want to do that and I, and I thank god for them and i thank god for those firefighters that'll go into a blazing building when when everyone else is running out they're running in i thank god for them i thank god for those em EMTs that will go along the highways when the semis and the cars and trucks are zooming by and they have to jump out of those ambulances and run over the car. I had a friend get hit because he was uh, a police officer standing there trying to direct traffic for a, for a, a, uh, an accident and he was just days away from uh, retiring. And uh, thank God he lived, but he, the, the car ran over. He saw the bottom of the car as he's getting ran over. That's what these men and women do. They get out there, and I thank God for them. And we need to stand up for our law enforcement and our firefighters, EMT, first responders. And so we put together a certificate that we want to give to them, and we want to thank them personally for uh, their service to our country. So I'm going to ask right now, if you are a, a uh, police officer, a firefighter, first responder, whatever that may be, I want you to stand up right now, if you would. Could you do that for us right now? If that's you. And you could stand up for us right now. Any of those? I know there was an officer here earlier. Maybe raise your hand because there's a few standing that we don't, we can't tell. Nobody here? But I'll tell you what. When we're done, the program's over with. If if that's maybe a husband or a wife that's not here, or a son or a daughter, and you have one, or you just know somebody that you want to say thank you to, you come and get a certificate, and we'll allow you to take it and go. We, Right over, oh, I'm sorry, honey. Come up here, darling. Would you do that for us? We didn't see you. Right here. Look at that. Take that over. Here. Are both of you or just one? What, 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 what? He's my son. He's a Cleveland police officer in the 4th District. 4th District Cleveland police officer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Tell him how much we appreciate what he does. That is awesome. All right, now we've also put together, and we've been delivering these by the thousands all over the country. They're a certificate that we give to our military men and women that says, for serving one nation under God. And that's what you do. That's what you did. You served a nation under God. And so I've asked the band, but we're going to do something here. We're going to, um, 
We're going to ask them to come forward. That will help them warm their legs up a little bit. And I know right now I'm here in front. And last night we had one, and, and a couple nights ago at a different event we had four or five World War II veterans. And today I know we have one sitting right down here under the fire and well deserved World War II veteran. If there's anybody else from World War II, just come here. What an honor and a privilege it is to have him with us here today. Another one over here. World War II veterans, come forward. And here's another one right there. We've got a couple. Another one coming from the back of the room. To have our mighty men and women stay on up here if you can with us. You can sit down on the edge of the stage if you need to. How cool is this? Yes. Come on, bring him up here. Come on up here, young man. You can sit right on the edge of the stage. If you need to sit down, just grab the edge of the stage and have a little seat. We've got three of them in our midst. Come on over here. Join us right here in the middle. Four of them, we got another one coming. Thank you. This lady? Wow, huh? now, come on up here, sweetheart. Look at this special thing. You were in the Navy. Wow, look at that, in the Navy. Come on up here, darling. Just sit right down there if you want. Get the seat. Yes. Thank you. My Lord. Now I want to go a little bit further, if you don't mind. Korean War, if you were Korea, come on up here. We want our Korean veterans to come on up here. If that was you, come on forth, Korea. Anybody Korea here today? Anyone Korea? Yeah, we're Korea. Well, give me a certificate to give her. All right, then let's just present you one on behalf of your father being in Korea. Oh, you got one. All right. Her, also give her one for Korea for an honor of her family member. And listen, at the end, if you've had a family member and you'd like a certificate, we'll give it to you. But let me say this. I want to go to this point. And I want to say this right now. Vietnam War veterans, America owes you an apology. You were not welcome home when you came home, and that is pathetic. You were spit at, you were called names, probably given the finger, and even more. But let me tell you something. Tonight under this tent, you're not only welcome, you are loved, and you are. we are grateful to have you with us. Vietnam War veterans, come on down here. We want to see you. We want to thank you. Come on, man. Pastor Sanders, thank you so much. 